Welcome to Bad Food Blog. And this one I'm going to be showing you one I'm making a bread maker. This is ripe cheddar and sun-dried tomato bread mix. And all you have to do is add water. Simply add water. Mm. Okay. This is the 500 gram bag. Mm. Three hundred and twenty milliliters of water. Let me get that while I talk a little bit about the bread making process. I use a bread maker, and I really enjoy using that because it takes a lot of the hassle out of doing it. Yeah, not quite three hundred and twenty. <laughs> <clears throat> now these bread making mixes come with everything included, which is really cool. That's 320. And the bread maker takes around four hours to make the bread. But you'll see when it comes out, it's quite wonderful. And I like this flavor. This cheddar and sunshine tomato is great. And what I'm going to be doing with this is not letting it go all the way to baking in here, though. I'm going to be making bread rolls for my son's lunch at school. So, I'll be taking them out once they've reached the proven and risen stage, putting them on a baking tray and separating them out into, let's try and think, um, eight rolls, I think? Uh, oh, ten rolls. Divide it into ten equally sized balls, according to that. And as far as preparation goes, that was it. 320 milliliters of water and empty a paper bag. Pretty cool, huh? Let's put it in the bread maker. My bread maker is this Panasonic model over here. It's called an SDZB2502. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it makes really great bread and it's actually quite big. It sits here on the side next to the Amazon Alexa and pretty much most of the time just does its job. It has made for me many, many, many loaves of bread. I'll show you the menu and how it works. So, we're gonna change it to large and put the lid down and push start. Now I'm gonna come back in two hours and that should be in the second risen stage which is when I make the shape the bread rolls out of it so I'm going to set an alarm for two hours I could just tell it to make the dough but it gets too complicated and I don't know what the options are so I just tend to interrupt it after two hours we'll come back in two hours so here we are the bread has risen and filled this whole thing and then it's kneaded it down which is the second phase called knocking it out and uh, as you can see the dough has filled all of this. I need to put some flour on my hands so the dough doesn't stick to it. I also need to spread a bit of flour on the top here. So when I'm rolling out the bread rolls, I'm going to do four bread rolls for my son's next two days lunches at school. This isn't coming out very easily, is it? Oh. You can see we got most of it. Let's grab the rest of this. Oh, it's extremely sticky. It's there. Wow, it's really springy. This is really great. So you can see that, but it's extremely springy, which is fantastic for making either bread rolls or pizzas. So let's uh, pinch that off for the bread rolls and that for the pizza bases. Now we're going to make four bread rolls. Let's just get a knife and chop that into four pieces. I don't want to stretch it into four pieces because I'm going to start deadening it otherwise. All right, there we go. So those four. Let's roll them into roll them into nice shapes for a red roll. Pinch them at the bottom. Give them a nice round bit on top. Not all going to be the same size. 
<laughs> right. Let's get a baking tray and some grease proof paper. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera, but. It should get larger a lot quicker. And then these bread rolls are going to go in the oven. Well, they're like mini loaves of bread, really. I expect for them to get a lot larger as well. So, there we go. Let's pop these in the oven and then see what they look like when they're finished. 160 degrees centigrade. They're probably going to need 15 minutes and they should rise fairly impressively. Right, 15 minutes is up. Let's see how the rolls are doing. Now, the way that you test if rolls are ready, let's turn them over and that nice hollow sound on the bottom means they're cooked and there's no dough left inside. Have a listen. And if you can hear that, I'll bring it closer to the microphone. It's like a drum sound. Perfect. And here's the finished items. I'll show you that nice drum sound. They're nice and light and fluffy. Fantastic. Bread rolls from my son's lunch. This has been Bad Food Vlog. Please rate, comment and subscribe. And there might be a follow-up video as to what I'm doing with the leftover dough in terms of making pizza with chicken and mushroom soup as a topping. I've done it before and it's nice with salami. Well, I think I'll carry on with it in this video. Someone's one is already in there. So. Just that 15 minutes leaving the dough lying around and it's already started to uh, already started to rise again and get a lot of air bubbles in it which is great it's gonna make nice big fluffy pizzas I'd say that one's ready I should really knock that square shape out of it like that if you ever get it square like that just roll it in the opposite diagonal directions a couple of times in some random directions and you'll see the dough will even itself out. <clears throat> you don't want your pizza to stick. Make sure it's nice and dry when you pop it in here. Make sure there's a good layer of flour between the baking tray and the pizza. Spread it out, try to get rid of any kinks, not make any holes. Using a spoon to spread it around. Now I'm not sure how other people do this, but a lot of people say you need to do uh, the toppings on first and the cheese on top. It's the opposite way the way I do it. Cheese next. And then the toppings. Making sure the cheese is going all the way around. There we go. Don't want it too close to the edges. Now I have a nice load of uh, Spanish salami to go on the top. Perfect. Nice little pizza going in the oven. 
So this last one, I'm going to try and roll it out flat. Get it nice and even. This one's going to be a long thin one for me. Whoops. Ah. Now I think we're ready now. Get dropped in the pan like that. Oh, look at that. Sizing's perfect. Yeah, that was not exactly spreading it out, was it? <laughs> there we go. Perfect. On mine, I like a little extra seasoning. dash of Nando's spicy sauce which I'm going to dribble in like a zigzag pattern down the pizza now if you see that Bit of artistic license there. Whoops, messing up the aesthetics there. See if you start with a nice pattern, it ends up looking even better. A little close to the edge, also a tiny bit close to the edge. Not quite centered. There we are. Perfection. And there's my one. I'll show you what they're like when they come out of the oven, but that won't be for a while because we have a call first. So my son will be eating his one, which we haven't been videoing, which was just a cheese pizza. He's not so much into the salami. Okay, later. So my wife already ran off with her pizza. This is what my one ended up looking like. As you can see, I've cut it to avoid slicing any of the salamis in half, which is kind of irregular, but fun. Oh my God, so much fun. And uh, let's just try it and see what it tastes like. Mmm. 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 That much salami has made it quite greasy, but mmm, does it taste nice? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. And the hot sauce really sets it off as well. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is yummy. Oh, and the, the base with the cheddar and sun-dried tomatoes is amazing. It's like cheese on top of cheese. Mmm. You have to try that. Using that sun-dried tomato stuff as a pizza base is absolutely amazing. And I cannot recommend it more than this. Out of that one packet, you could do about five pizzas if you had a family to feed. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.